what about venture capital and and the role of venture capitalists in your in your growth? Obviously, you've needed cash to to grow that fast. But what kind of other uh, upsides or downsides has has there been to to working with VCs? We will hope that your VCs don't listen to this episode. So you can talk freely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can definitely talk freely here. Uh, in 2015, actually, when we when we founded the company. Uh, we just left our consulting sum- summer jobs and uh, my, for for instance, for myself, my job at the bank, and then like all the like voluntary duties that I had besides school and for year it was like his job at the marketing agency, just for an idea and we didn't raise any capital in the beginning. So actually, for the first half a year, we went with our own savings. We just wanted to learn and try out like uh, a lot of things. We were really had like passion for this and. Then, like it came a bit kind of like uh, out of a sudden. We had already tried multiple different business concepts, <laughs> and uh, and then we met Ville Vesterinen, um, who was who was back then uh, an investor at at Reactor Ventures, and then we just we were just borrowing some ideas. We haven't hadn't really founded like. Uh, what we want to do yet, but they liked our approach of kind of like the Y Combinator, y combinator style, uh, like, like, you know, mentality of uh, failing fast, like build, measure, learn, and, you know, fail fast and and quick iteration cycles and, and what we were doing kind of like with the bit, even with the business concept, the concepts and that level, that level. So they just basically threw out the question, what would you do if we, if we gave you 55K? And how much faster could you test, test and try out things? So, so we actually did that in in 2015. But then with that 50, 55k, we we went on for the next two years. And it, so it wasn't really like uh, it wasn't our primary like, primary uh, goal to raise venture capital. So we we then survived so long just like on the student loans and savings, and we wanted to spend the cat the uh, VC money into trying things as quickly as you can and once we have founded it and one, once we had bootstrap it bootstrapped uh swappy to how much was it 200k net revenue per month that that was when we raised our first like actual proper round in in 2018 january so yeah it's it it has been a lot of <laughs> downs in in that first two years as well i would say you know, living uh living on on a shoestring budget and on noodles <laughs> Hopefully not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, what is the? How is the? As an entrepreneur, how has the your sort of? Um, how has the company not culture changed? But yeah, how has running the company changed after this sort of practically the day to day? And uh, I'm not trying to press too much, like get into the negatives of the thing. But like, are there any compromises even that you've had to make, or has it been mostly positive? I would say mostly positive. Like, uh, of course, the role. I would say the biggest change, as he as he also asked, uh, like phrased in the question in a way, has has been the like uh, change of the role. So so in the really early days, when you had uh, under fifty people, the role was very very operational and just like uh, on like when when like when we grew from four people to fifty people, that happened in the first half a year after raising the first funding round, and. You know, like when you look at those numbers, like in the first year after raising like a seed round, growing from uh, four people to 60 people, and then over the next year go growing growing to 200, you need to adapt really quickly. And and I would say one of the most important traits or one of the most, Im- one of the toughest challenges also in a way has been that you need to, um, <laughs> you need to hide, you need to, you, you cannot have too much ego in the game and you need to ha- constantly hire people who are smarter than you. But that also means like uh, giving away some of the things you are actually good at because you just you just find smarter people who are much better than you. So that has been, of course, I, I would say like uh, probably for us as founders, but also for a lot of early employees also, it's not always easy, but that's something you have to do. And then you... You, you just need to learn into your new roles because it that it, it changes all the time. And you're already present in, in quite many international markets as well. Maybe if we touch upon that a bit, um, how do you you know determine markets and and what have been the some of the 
you know, has it been easy to <laughs> internationalize or has there been some, been some um, challenges along the way? Uh, when we when we started started the firm, we knew that like uh, Finland is such a small market, even in this space, that we need to go abroad basically immediately. So so that's that's how we started. So to Sweden, we we went just we went to Sweden mainly because it was it's one of the easiest markets in a way to enter from Finland. Uh, we have a lot of Swedish speakers here, and so on. But then after that, we we made this uh, kind of like expansion research all over Europe. So so we were looking at the kind of like um, uh, GNI metrics and and everything and and everything else like like data on the market, like which which markets are the most appealing in this in this space and the hypothesis on that. But then actually we we didn't enter the number one market on the list we went to one of the toughest markets instead even even after doing the research and we decided decided to go to Italy because we knew that like if you want to be a number one player in the world in this business in this space you need to enter tougher, some tougher markets first and not necessarily the easiest or the most appealing ones so we knew that even if we would fail we would learn so much faster in one of the toughest e-commerce markets than we would do anywhere else. So that was the number one reason in the early days. And But after that, we, when we noticed that this kind of like the playbook that we built around it, around it, it works anywhere. When you just adapt kind of like the right things in the, in the market, market big model and in the kind of like uh, in the early stages of any market in the research stage, 